يجسد النجم الأمريكي المصري الأصل رامي مالك دور أسطورة موسيقى الروك البريطاني فريدي ميركري في فيلم بوهيميان رابسيدي الفيلم يروي قصة صعود ميركري منذ عام 1971 عندما التقى عازف الجيتار براين ماي وقارع الطبول روجر تايلر وأصبح المغني الرئيسي لفرقتهم التي سماها بنفسه كوين وباتت لاحقا واحدة من أشهر الفرق الموسيقية في التاريخ فقد جذبت حفلاتها جماهير ضخمة في أكبر استادات العالم وتجاوزت مبيعات أغانيها الرسمية الثلاثمائة مليون ألبوم وواصلت الفرقة ذروة نجاحها في حفل لايف إيد باستاد ويمبلي عام 1985 التي شاهد بثها الحي ما يقارب ملياري شخص وذلك بفضل أداء ميركوري الذي اعتبره النقاد أعظم أداء حي في تاريخ موسيقى الروك رامي ازيك كله تمام الحمد لله عظيم You know what distinguishes uh, Freddie Mercury from other singers is that he's not merely a singer but he's also a performer mm. which makes it quite a complex job to inhabit him how, yeah. how did you achieve that? I would look at him and one he is to me one of the greatest performers if not the greatest stage performer of all time and I thought how, how am I ever going to uh, you know reach the height of that it seems like an insurmountable task but I, I thought about it in the way that I look at any other character that I would create and just find the humanity in him so I, I started to look at him as a young man and obviously his name is not Freddie Mercury it's mm -hmm. Farouk Bulsara and that was something I, you know I could start to identify with and someone who was uh, an immigrant uh, conflicted about so many things in his life, his identity, his sexual identity, and uh, he had a, um, an overbite that was pretty sizable. There were aspects of him that I would see as, uh, how is this human being ever going to be on stage doing what he does? And I think it was this kind of this tempest of something burning inside of him that no matter what the obstacle was, it was going to shine as radiantly and boldly and audacious, audaciously as it did on camera. ولد ميركوري عام 1946 في زنجبار باسم فاروق برسارة لعائلة باريسية. الباريسيون هم جماعة دينية وعرقية هاجرت من إيران واستوطنت في الهند قبل ألف عام. فاروق شغف الموسيقى وتمرن على عزف البيانو منذ طفولته في الهند وزنجبار حتى هاجر أهله إلى بريطانيا في بداية الستينيات وفي بريطانيا واجه العنصرية ولاحقا غير اسمه إلى فريدي ميركيري وتمرد على ديانة أهله ومارس العلاقات الجنسية مع الرجال As you said, there is some similarities between you and him. You're both sons of immigrants and you had to make your way up to, uh, to the top of your game. How much did that resonate with you? Did it um, aid you in inhabiting him? Yeah, yeah, because it, it brought him down to life for me. Uh, in, in a way, you see him as, as this, you know, a deity, something almost godlike. And, uh, and for me, I was like, oh, you know, there are similarities. There are things that you, Rami Malek, can uh, definitely identify with here. But Wa did you did wanting you? to prove yourself in front mm -hmm. of your, your a family who probably never wanted you to go into this business in the first place was you something. You told me that I your could... family were not happy about you <laughs> going into acting, yeah. and I, I thought of you when he had this issue with his family. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, mine are very supportive now. <laughs> كان ميركوري يتمتع بمدى صوتي غير طبيعي مكنه من الانتقال من مقاطع صامتة وهادئة إلى مقاطع أوبرالية حادة ومرتفعة ثم مقاطع هارد روك خشنة وغليظة وفضلا عن ذلك كان حضوره خرافيا على المسرح يعزف البيانو تارة والجيتار تارة أخرى ويثير تفاعل الجمهور بهتافه وحركته من دون توقف وكأنه ذو قدرات خارقة how did you capture the physicality of his performance? A long time ago, about a year prior, and uh, I sat down with choreographers in London and I realized a choreographer was not what I needed. He moved so spontaneously and had uh, these, these big, bold, uh, um, kind of 
uh, gestures on stage that were that could be seen all the way at the back of the stadium and I needed to be able to do things like that spontaneously as well so I worked with a movement teacher named Polly Bennett and I had I had watched Eddie Redmayne do the theory of everything and I wanted to find someone who could help me articulate in, in that respect so it was rehearsal day in and day but out. Was she an expert in Freddie's movement? She was not, no. I mean, we both would just sit and learn about Freddie together, but we, we learned how uh, from the, we would watch, study him um, just in, in an interview like this, when he would move forward, how he would hold a cigarette, when he would take a drink, and then you would see this kind of, this elegance start to come about in the way he would, uh, you know, just articulate his head gestures. And then we would look at early Freddie and uh, perhaps with the longer hair and uh, the 70s movements and study them from archival footage. But, you know, sometimes we would be in, in a dance studio and she would say, all right, let's do Killer Queen, but I want you to do it in the style of Marie Antoinette. So I would be giving this kind of, uh, uh, you know, Moliere version of uh, Freddie Mercury and then all of a sudden you would feel things start to happen, I would, in, inside of my body where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing it, which means that it can be done. So it was a step-by-step -step process of uh, discovering that, that I, I could do it and uh, a lot of research. رغم النجاح الهائل الذي حققه ميركري إلا أنه عاش معظم حياته وحيدا وخاصة بعد طلاقه من زوجته وحبيبة عمره ماري أوستن بسبب ميوله الجنسية المثلية ورغم أنه ارتبط لاحقا بعلاقة رومانسية مع شاب آخر وهو جيم هاتن إلا أنه ترك ممتلكاته لماري بعد وفاته بسبب مرض الإيدز عام 1991 and everybody worshipping you, yet inside you, you are not satisfied. Uh, it's, a, it's a great point. I do see him as a tragic figure as well. I think it's the, the lack of satisfaction that keeps uh, a, a, us as artists, I think, challenging ourselves. I've been satisfied with playing Elliot Alderson, and that, that was the role of a lifetime. Then this comes up, and you just I keep pushing myself uh, to, to perhaps even exceed my own expectations. He was happy with his art as well, performing. Yeah. But he had issues, for instance, his identity. How much does that resonate with you? Mm, I, I mean, I, I think everyone struggles with some semblance of their identity, but uh, I, I'd like to think that I'm, I'm at a place where I'm, I'm more comfortable with who <laughs> I am. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's every, every aspect of that is, is going to be a, a struggle uh, in terms of discovering exactly who you are. And I think that one thing that he really helps me out with and helps a lot of people out with is never um, feeling like you have to label yourself or feel you know, marginalized or categorized by, any, uh, any, by being a type of person or this or that. What he really fills me with the strength of is saying, it doesn't matter if I ever do discover exactly who I am or not. I am exactly what I need to be at any moment. And uh, I think that's a message he gives to everyone who listens to his music. You know, we can be out here um, either watching a film or being, especially being on stage uh, with, with him while he's on stage listening to him in the audience. And he connects with everybody and says, hey, we all belong. He remained with that feeling of loneliness, even to the end. Beginning, he felt detached because of he was different, and then after f achieving fame and success, he still f felt lonely. You know, you, you hear it in, in his uh, lyrics, the sense of loneliness. I mean, find me somebody to love. That's a, it's a reoccurring theme in a lot of the songs that he writes. How do you avoid loneliness yourself? Well, uh, surrounding myself with, with family and great friends is, is something that, uh, of course, helps me that. How does anybody avoid loneliness? The first time for the person Mercury was <laughs> the first time for 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 the first for the Oscars? Bismillah. Inshallah. We will, we will rock you. Sing it! We will, we will rock you. 
tu sais amasser, BBC.